welcome back to Vlogmas. Today we are going to go over how to track macros and I'm going to be as brief as possible so that it's really just simple in your mind and you can execute it tomorrow if you want to. Remember to subscribe if you haven't so you can see all of the future Vlogmas videos and then catch up on what we're going going through in our lives. Um, we do our vlogs every week and other informational videos. So subscribe because it means a lot to us. Let's get into it. First up, why I started tracking macros. So this might mean something to you. It might help you out. I went through years of trying to figure it out. I did paleo. I did um, like I counting blocks, you know, the zone diet. Um, I, you know, kind of tried to do keto. I didn't eat carbs for a long time. I've counted calories. I've only eaten 500 calories a day. Like I felt like I had done it all and tried it all and nothing worked. Nothing was some, nothing was working and um, I couldn't be consistent with anything. That's a huge um, piece of this. After I met Brad, I started tracking macros and my whole body and life and mindset changed. I finally felt like I could eat enough, I could eat what I wanted to, and I looked the way I wanted to. So gone were the days of making sure that I had all candy, all chips, all junk food out of my house. Now, after tracking macros, I can have those things in my house and I don't feel the need to overindulge. Overall, I would say the reason that I love tracking macros is it allows me to be flexible. It has taught me the right portion sizes. It's taught me a lot about me personally and that's, you know, tracking macros can be personalized to every single person. So it's not just a blanket diet for everyone. And that's why I think it works so well. All right, just a brief of overview of what macros are. It stands for macronutrients. So this means if you're tracking macros, you are tracking macronutrients, you're tracking carbs, you're tracking fat, and you're tracking protein. That's it, simply put. If you are familiar with counting calories, it's like counting calories, but just more specific. So cal counting calories is the umbrella, and then if you really wanna get specific and, and reach specific goals, really key in on your body's performance, you want to track carbs, fats, and protein under that umbrella. Calories are made up of macronutrients. So for one gram of carb, it's going to be four calories. For one gram of protein, it's also four calories. And for one gram of fat, it's nine calories. So when you're tracking macros, you have these numbers, you know, you're hitting your daily number, you're inevitably hitting a calorie amount too. So you're like, it's a two in one, you're tracking calories and macros. But when you're tracking macros, all you have to worry about is looking at carbs, fats, and protein at the end of the day. Before we get into how to track macros, I just wanna say this. You need to find numbers that are specific to you. You can totally go on Google and type in uh, and look for a macro calculator. It's going to use an algorithm that basically looks at your activity level, how much you weigh, your height, and usually your gender, and that's it and it'll come up with numbers for you. You can do that, absolutely, but is that specific to you and taking in your entire lifestyle, your history, uh, whether you've been working out for a while or not, like what are you going through? Are you on medication? Do you have some um, medical needs? Uh, so there's a lot of other things that those calculators are missing out on. Um, so my suggestion is we have an old YouTube video, you could try to calculate your own um, or we have a really nice feature on memoriesovermacros.com, which is my coaching website. You can apply for 30 bucks. You can apply for us to make your macros for you. And you go through an entire application just like you would if you were going to be coached by us. Um, we ask you a bunch of different questions. So really be thorough in your application and we will create your specific macros for you depending on your goal. So now you have your macros, you're ready to go. You're excited about it. Um, the first thing that you're gonna do is download an app that allows you to track your food. You don't have to do this. You could actually use pen and paper and track your macros that way. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go over um, an app called MyFitnessPal. I feel like a lot of people use it and find value. It has a great database of foods. 
So that is what I'm going to talk about. So download my fitness pal and you don't even have to pay for premium. You can set all of your goals, your carbs, fat, and protein, you can set them all at, let's say zero. And all you have to do at the end of the day is check, it's like a checks and balance system. You're gonna check to see in your nutrition section if you hit your macros. All right, so once you have your macros, you're super excited about them, it's time to start tracking. My tip is that you, when you're starting out, you want to plan ahead. So I will talk about that at the end, but let's get into it and just, for example, if I had macros that were 200 grams of carbs, 140 protein, and 50 fat, that is, those are the numbers that I would try to hit in one day. So what does that look like? For breakfast, let's say I had a Jimmy Dean egg white sandwich. I had two tablespoons of ketchup and I had a frozen waffle. I would go into my fitness pal. I would track that sandwich, the ketchup, and the waffle. Something really nice about my fitness pal is that you can scan barcodes and then it'll pop up on my fitness pal. It's super easy. The product is right there and you hit track. So I tracked that in my breakfast. Now I'm at 21 protein, 65 carb, and 12 fat. So those numbers are going toward my total for the day. So I'm just at breakfast, so I'm looking at my carbs, and I'm at 65 already, and my top number is 200. So I kinda wanna be careful the rest of the day um, as far as not having too high of carb foods in my other meals. If you're tracking on something like pen and paper, you can find these numbers on the nutrition facts label. So you don't, you're, it's not that you're relying on my fitness pal to tell you these numbers. You can flip it and you can look to see what the nutrition facts are. It'll tell you for one serving, the fat, the carb, the protein. So those numbers are what is going towards your total for the day. All right, I'm done with breakfast. Now I'm gonna go to my lunch and program that in. Let's just say I had a big salad, romaine. I got some six ounces of chicken breast. I have honey mustard dressing. I have croutons and then I have 100 grams of apple. So now my macros are at 78 protein, 111 carb and 18 fat. So I still have some room in my fat before I hit 50. I have some room in my carbs before I hit 200. And I have quite a bit of room for protein in the rest of my day. Your best plan of action for measurements of things are going to be the actual weight of the item. So for my chicken breast, I have six ounces in here. You can weigh it raw, but sometimes it's just easier if you want to weigh it already cooked. So if you're gonna weigh it cooked, track it cooked as well. So something easy for a salad, you set your bowl on the scale, you tear it out, you put your romaine in, you tear it out again, and then you put your six ounces of chicken in, that's great, tear it again so it's at zero, and then you can pour on your dressing, make sure you have 30 grams of dressing because that's one serving, um, and then you can weigh out your apple as well to 100 grams. So you do have to do that extra step of weighing and measuring, um, but it really pays off to be as precise as possible. All right, so now that my lunch is in there and programmed, now let's talk about a snack. I put in a protein bar, a light cheese stick, and one tablespoon of peanut butter. So now my macros are at 109 protein, so we're really approaching that 140. We have 30 left, let's say, for dinner time. We have um, 132 carbs, so we still have about 70 to, um, for from now until dinner, and then my fat right now is at 35, so I have about 15 grams of fat left. By the end of the day, I want to reach within like five to seven grams of protein and carbs. Um, that could be over or under, that's my personal rule. And then for fats, I wanna be a little bit closer, so between like three and five grams by the end of the day. Fat grams are worth a lot of calories, so if I overshoot or undershoot, by more than like three to five grams, then that's a lot of calories I'm either overeating or undereating, and I'm just not being precise if I overeat or undereat. All right, now I have dinner left. Dinner and like a, a small dessert. So I am having to play a little bit of 
Tetris with this meal because although I'm close to hitting my macros, what I thought um, I could have for dinner, I had to reduce a little bit. So for instance, I said I'm having ground beef and rice for dinner, um, but that put me over my protein. So I just had to reduce the amount of beef that I ate. Um, and then I put in a little bit of a dessert. So it is two chocolate rice cakes and a tablespoon of peanut butter and I was still too low on carbs. I was still at like 186 carbs. So I put in a little bit more rice. So that's kind of what you have to do. You have to imagine like just playing the game of Tetris, making it work and hitting your numbers. So my numbers for the end of the day are 147 protein, 201 carb and 52 fat. So I overshot my protein by seven grams. Um, that's my top, like, you know, I could reduce the amount of ground beef that I ate. That's, you know, that's another option that I could do. Um, but I hit my carbs within a really good range and I hit my fat within two grams. That's, that's awesome. So, um, all in all, a very, very good day. And that's a perfect example of how closely you should be hitting your macros because you'll never hit them dead on just so you know. If you're not going to hit your macros within a really good range, then there's no point in tracking macros. There's really not. You might as well just be like tracking calories. Um, sometimes your calorie amount on my fitness pal won't really reflect what you, um, what your like macros are equaling out because just mathematically, um, that's kind of like what you can look at sometimes. Um, but don't pay attention to that. Just pay attention to, am I hitting my macros at the end of the day, every day? I've told you I would talk about my pro tip, which is planning ahead, uh, especially for beginners. And even myself nowadays, I still have to do that. So um, what I highly, highly, highly recommend is not winging it. So I wouldn't do what I just explained to you, which is just kind of like moving throughout my day, just like, oh, you know, I'll throw in this, this, um, and hopefully I'll be at my macros, like cross my fingers. That's not what you want to do until you're more experienced. Um, what I what I really recommend is planning ahead. So the night before or the morning of, sit down and make like plan out your entire day, program in everything you think you're going to eat, and make sure that you hit your macros. Um, maybe your day doesn't go as well as what you planned, but at least you have a guide for your day, and at least you're programming in foods that you enjoy eating. Um, so if you're just starting out, program in things that you already have at your house that you enjoy eating. It's not about broccoli, rice, and ground beef for the rest of your life. You can eat fun foods. You can stick in some candy at the end of the night. Um, sometimes what really helps is um, programming in your dessert first. That's something that you can look forward to and then plan the rest of your day around it. So if it's like a high carb, high fat dessert, then maybe the, the rest of the day, you're gonna have to eat leaner meats and lower carb, but you still get that dessert at the end of the day. Um, sometimes that's gonna be worth it and sometimes not. So I want to just close out this video um, saying that this is just a brief overview. I really hope it helps, but if you do have questions, please just comment below. And maybe in the future, we'll do more macro-based videos uh, so we can just show you more and help you on your fitness journey. But remember to like this video and share it with someone who is maybe interested in tracking macros. You're worth it.